Matilda is a pretty, beautiful, gorgeous, very attractive wife of Hitler. She dreams about relaxed and richness of life. When she is invited to a grand party, she got the invitation from the Minister of Public Instruction and Madame Forrester to their residence on Monday evening, January 18th for the grand feast. She feels unhappy because she does not have a gorgeous gown for the formal party. She manages to buy a new dress and borrowed jewelry from her best friend. Let's see what happens next. The day of the ball arrived. Madame Loisel was a great success. She was the prettiest of all. Elegant, gracious, smiling and full of gaiety. All the men noticed her, asked her name and wished to waltz with her. She danced with enthusiasm, thinking of nothing, floating on a cloud, cloud of happiness. She and her husband left the ball at around 4 o'clock. Out in the street, they found no carriage and began to look for one. There was one in the distance. It took them as far as their door in Martyr Street. They went up to their apartment. Madame Purcell at the great success in the party. She looks pretty, beautiful, gorgeous, very attractive and also favorable. All the men wanted to dance with her and asked her name. And she was very happy. Matilda enjoyed the party thoroughly. She is, she is floating on a cloud of happiness. They left the ball at, at the 4 o'clock. They left the ball around the 4 o'clock. In the street, they did not find any carriage. They saw, at last, there was one in the distance. They took the carriage and went to their apartment. She stood in front of the glass for a final view of herself in her glory and suddenly uttered a cry. Her necklace was not around her neck. She turned towards her husband. I have, I have, I no longer have Madame Forrester's necklace. And they looked in the folds of the dress, in the pockets, everywhere, but did not find it. Well, they reached to, to their home. She stands in front of the mirror for a final view of herself of her glory. Suddenly, she uttered a cry. She discovered that her necklace was missing. Matilda turned moved towards her husband and said to him, Oh, I have, I have, I no longer have Madame for the Forester's necklace. Then, this, they searched in the folds of the dress in the pockets, everywhere, thoroughly, but they did not find it. They looked at each other, utterly downcast. It will be necessary, he said, to write to your friend that you have broken the clasp of the necklace and that you will have it repaired. That will give us time. She wrote as he directed. At the end of a week, they had lost all hope. Loisel declared, we must take measures to replace
place this jewel they looked at each other utterly downcast they were disheartened they were depressed matilda's husband told to her to tell her friend that the interlocking part of the necklace was broken and we will give it to back after getting it repaired and she wrote a letter to her friend as her husband instructed now by the end of the week they found no sign of necklace they lost all hopes and loisel stated that we must do something we must take some action to solve a problem to replace the diamond necklace they went from jeweler to jeweler seeking a necklace like the last lost one in a shop they found a necklace of diamonds which seems exactly like the one they had borrowed it was valued at 40000 francs loisel possessed 18000 francs which his father had left him he borrowed the rest when madame loisel took the jewels back to madame forester's the latter sat in a cool tone you should have written them to me sooner for i might have needed them they went searching in all the jewelry shop they went from jeweler to jeweler at last finally they found a similar necklace the diamond necklace which cost 40000 francs he had only 18000 francs and borrowed the rest when madame loisel matilda went to her friend's house to return the jewelry the diamond necklace her friend was very angry with her for returning the jewelry late madame loisel now knew the terrible life of bare necessity they had to pay this frightful debt and she would pay it they sent away the maid they changed their lodgings she learned the heavy cares of household the hateful work of kitchen she washed the dishes and the soil linen the husband worked evening and night this life lasted 10 years at the end of 10 years they had repaid all their debts madame loisel now seemed old she had become a down top down trodden woman of a poor household now they needed money to pay back the all the debts so they stop their mates they change their lodgings they went to a smaller house and poor matilda had to do all the household works she had she washed the dishes and the dirty clothes bed sheets and the table cloths and her husband had to work day and night finally after 10 years they paid all the debts by now madame loisel that is matilda had become old and very poor one day as she was taking a walk she suddenly saw madame forester should she speak to her 
Yes, certainly. Why not? And now that she had paid, she would tell. She would tell her all. She approached her. Good morning, Jean. Her friend uttered a cry of astonishment. Oh, my poor Matilda, how you have changed! Yes, I have had. I have had some hard days. and all because of you because of me how is that well i lost the diamond necklace that you loaned me i returned another to you exactly like it and it has taken us 10 years to pay for it madam forester took both her hands as she said oh my poor matilda the diamonds were false they were not worth more than 500 francs one day while matilda taking a walk she met her friend madame forester her friend was surprised to see in the changes of matilda and then Matilda confessed her friend that how she had lost the diamond necklace and how she had replaced it with the new one and it had taken it 10 years to repay all the debts after listening Matilda's words Madame Forester's felt very sad and she said to her friend oh my dear friend my poor matilda the diamonds were false they were not real they were not worth more than 500 francs here ends the lesson the diamond necklace written by guide mubasant with a strong moral that is be content with what you have thank you